Bigger Talks, Bigger Talks. We're back again with another episode. I'm so excited because today we get to talk about the design of the human. I mean, human design. And I have human design expert, entrepreneur. She's a mom. She's a creator. She's phenomenal. This is her second time on Bigger Talks. Mike Gabriela, welcome to the podcast. And by the way, you are in Spain right now. So thank you for taking the time. I think it's 7 p.m. your time, 10 a.m. my time. And we're all in it. It's miracle season. Welcome to Bigger Talks. How are you? How are you fit? Thank you, Eric. Thank you for this nice introduction. I'm doing great. I'm very excited for today's talk to get even deeper into human design than we did in part one. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so yeah, excited to get into it. So yeah, let's talk. So before we get into it, like, who is Micah? And how did she get into human design? And how did the design change and advance and evolve your life? Wow, that's a, that's a deep question. That's a really <laughs> deep question. So honestly, I think the reason that I'm doing this is because to me, human design was absolutely life-changing. Like I had been struggling with work, with life, with health, with all of the things. And I just didn't understand why I couldn't make shit work. Like I was wake, working 18 hours a day. I was writing 250 emails a day and I was doing everything society and everybody told me I had to do in order to be successful. And it was an absolute disaster. I was like struggling with my second burnout at the age of 30. I had an autoimmune disease. I had hit rock bottom. I had engaged in very unhealthy behavior in order to continue to keep up with what I thought society was asking me to do in order to get what I wanted. Um, and it got to a point where I was just like praying and I was like, what is, what's going on? Like, why is nothing working? I'm doing everything that I think I have to do and I'm struggling so hard, like why? And then one night I listened to a podcast about being a projector and I had absolutely no fucking idea what that meant, but I was like, that's what I am. And suddenly, literally my whole life made sense. And I'm like, now I understand why nothing ever worked. And it's because I didn't understood or I hadn't understood the energetics of things, right? So we grew up in the society that tells us this is the way things are meant to be done. This is the only way we're able to achieve the things that we want. And if you're not able to succeed in the way I'm telling you, it's because you're not working hard enough. It's because mm. you don't want it enough. And I was just trapped in the cycle of blaming myself, of hating myself, of just feeling so unworthy, undeserving. You know, that was like a really dark experience to have for myself. And the second that I understood the energetics of who I've come to be and I started to understand that there's this whole different layer to life that I hadn't had access to yet. I felt the biggest relief that I felt in my life and I suddenly could start understanding and loving parts of myself I had projected for so, 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 so many years. And that's how human design came into my life. Yeah, that, that's beautiful. And God willing, hopefully someone can listen to this podcast and get their energy archetype and human design through your voice and your presence and your authority of who you are. So you say you, you listen to a podcast. Before we got on, you talked about being a projector. You know, as projector in human design, you have to be invited. So I was, I reached out and said, hey, do you want to do the podcast? He's like, hey, that makes sense for your energy archetype. So what I believe and what I'm come to understand as far as human design in my life is that human design is a gateway or pathway to understand your worthiness within yourself, right? Because yeah. my design, I'm a 3-6 uh, model, role model generator. So I always would say yes to a lot of things. What I realized some of those yeses was really no's internally, but it made sense. It was logical. It was a friend or I should do it. But once I committed to it, I didn't feel the way I thought I would once I started it. So can you give the people a brief on like, the importance of knowing your design, what it represents and how it can help you not only understand your worthiness, but understand where you're going in life. Because I think a lot of us are confused because the world is changing, things are changing, and the collective consciousness is changing. We need something more than just, you know, the religious aspect or maybe astrology or numerology. I feel like human design is kind of breaking through in a different way to help us clear the way so we can be the way for ourselves. I think you made a great example. So the way that I see human design and the way that it can help us is that it's really this kind of roadmap to our energetic authenticity. Mm. 
And so we often get caught up by, you know, what does it mean to be authentic? Like there's such a trend on like, I have to be authentic. But even though it seems so easy, like, oh, just be who you are. It's really hard for us to understand what that means and how that looks like. And so human design has very tangible strategies that help us align with the universe so that we can move out of resistance and find flow in our life. And the thing that you're explaining specifically, I think is really interesting and I want to get into it. So there's like five archetypes, right? And for the generator, which is what you are and the manifesting generator, which is a hybrid between the generator and the manifester type, we really have to understand that there is this deep connection that is rooted to your consistent energy that comes from the sacral center. And the sacral center is the energy center that's at the height of your belly button. And that's like connected to your desire, your creativity, your life force, that's where really, you know, this drive to create and to move forward is born. And it's so intrinsically connected to the things that you love and excite you that the moment that you start compromising your desires, your excitement to please others, you will feel that your energy gets robbed, right? And so what happens is that that sacral center is your treasure box. It lights up the world. People are intrinsically drawn to your magnetic aura and they want to know like Eric let's have a drink you know let's go for a walk like I want to be around you you're the life of the party when you are in a place where you're excited to be when you're like in your radiant energy but that treasure box only has a certain amount of space mm. and every time you're saying yes to a commitment where your body is telling you no to you're actually accepting a letter that is filling up that box. And the more letters that you have in that box that are actually no's that you said yes to, they're going to absolutely drain that energy center. Right. And so what happens is that you can imagine that your aura is in a constant collaboration with the universe, which is offering you on a silver platter, yes and no options. That sacral center is super basic. It's like, hell yes, I'm loving it, or ugh, no, disgusting, don't wanna do it. And so what happens is that every time that, you know, you don't have enough energy in that sacral center, you're over compromising, you actually don't have the energy to feed that magnetic aura. Mm -hmm. When you don't have energy to feed that magnetic aura, the universe can send you impulses. When there is no space in your aura to receive impulses, your sacral center has nothing to react to. And that's when you're going to feel stuck. That's when you're going to feel stagnant, right? And so that is when we start moving out of energetic authenticity because our subconscious knows all of these amazing things are for us to experience in this lifetime, but we don't know how to get there because we haven't understood energetics yet. And so human design is really that tool that helps you connect to the wisdom of your body. Mm. Our society has told us or taught us that our mind is superior. That if we make, you know, like a good decision, we have to think it through. We have to make a list and pros of like a list of cons and pros. But the truth is that our body is so much wiser than anything our mind could conjure up. Like our mind is great to find solutions to problems and to get inspired, but it's not here to move you through life. So you are saying our bodies have more, hold more wisdom or have more guidance than our mind. Exactly. Wow. That is just a different dynamic I've ever heard in life. Because everyone say growth mindset, you know, the abundant thinking, it's all mental, mind over matter. And it's like, no one talks about the wisdom of the body, like the nervous system, you know, how do you feel? What does it feel like? And are you excited? And I think my challenge is there are things that's come in my life that I say yes to, but they're not hell yes. They're just mm -hmm. yes. Like, yeah, I can do that. And then when I get in it, my energy is kind of neutralized. It's not like, yeah, I'm looking forward. Like I was looking forward to this interview because I know the energy you bring, right? And how you talk and how you show up. So it was a nudge to reach out to like, hey, I want you back on a podcast because I know we want to have such a powerful discussion about our energy. I'm big on energy. So you, before you, you, you talked about manifesting generators and generators, what are the other three that people should know and be aware of? How do we discover and find out what our design is? The way that you can discover what your design is, is this is a fantastic way for me to plug my website. Go to my website, you get a free chart. Um, you need your birth time, birthplace, birth hour. Um, and that will create, you know, a deep understanding of your energetic roadmap, which is called the body graph. And we have the projector, the manifester and the reflector that we haven't talked about. 
And so the projector is about 20% of the population and they are the newest energy type. And they are the energy type that is guiding us into the new paradigm. These are the ones that are rising in society into positions of power, but the way that they are creating the power dynamics is completely different because they're neutralizing this idea of having to use force and manipulation and like, you know, authority to move people forward. They're actually doing it from a very different perspective, which is really constantly asking what other people need. They're here to guide us into this new consciousness by figuring out different ways of optimizing what we already have. And so they are very light, highly sensitive, and they have a specific way of seeing things. Mm. So the most important thing for a projector is understanding that their worth does not come from doing, but that their success is absolutely reliant on their capacity to explain what only they are able to see. And the more value they provide in the world and the more they're able to support others in achieving success, the more successful they will become as well. So they're really here to see things differently, but support people. And the more they support people, the more the universe supports them. And then projector, right, what you are, you have to be invited. And why is that for that energy type? Why does in invitation and or invitation is so important for their energy type? That's a great question. So the reason projectors need to be invited is because we have a penetrative focused aura. We're going to do great one-on-one -on -one conversations because our aura naturally is penetrating into the core soul of the person that we have in front of us. And so because we see things that people are not ready to see, we often, if we don't know that we have to wait for the invitation, we'll come across as like, we know it all. Like, I, you know, like, I know all your problems. I'm telling you what you're meant to be doing. But the other person needs to have recognition for the projector first. Only when there's recognition, the other person creates space within them and the wisdom of the projector can land. If a projector starts telling people how great they are and how good they are at doing anything and everything and like all of the stuff that they know without being invited and recognized, they will feel a very strong rejection. We got that. Now, can you discuss the reflector and what's the other one? Man Manifest. Manifest. Yes. So the reflector is only 1% of society. Every time I have an event, like a live event, and there's a reflector in the room, everybody's like pointing at the reflector. Oh my God, it's the first time meeting a reflector. Like human design nerds get so excited about reflectors. It's the funniest. I have to say reflectors are extremely unique. And what makes them so special or so different is that the other energy types are ruled by the sun, but the reflector is ruled by the moon. And so the reflector has a completely open chart and no singular definition, meaning the reflector is really here to mirror the health and the well-being of society. It's great to have a reflector in our, you know, team at our job. It's great to have it in our friends group. They're always going to be the reference point for how well something's doing. So if we have a reflector in the office and they're struggling with something specific, we need to fix that thing that they're struggling with because they are like the manifestation of what's working, what's not working. Reflectors are incredibly open and free because they're here to sample, they're here to try. They will mold and adapt and mirror everybody they meet. And so they often have a very strong character when they're conditioned because they're holding on to what they got to know when they grew up, mm. but their road to alignment is really letting go of any construction of who they're meant to be and being absolutely open and free to move and shift in every situation and every environment. And they got the manifesto, the manifesto. Yeah. And the manifesto is also pretty rare. It's seven, eight percent of the population, but the manifesto has something also very unique, which is a closed aura. So manifestors are here to be in a position of leadership. Manifestors come from the olden time, from the kings and the conquerors. They have blue blood. And so they don't have consistent energy, but they're very authoritarian. They're very strong. It used to happen is that, you know, the king would be like, let's conquer this land. And then the manifestor, because it doesn't have consistent energy, would use the generator soldiers to do all the dirty work because they have consistent energy. And it's part of the generator's karma to really let go of that idea of having to sacrifice one own, one's own energy for others and really embodying 
being in their own desires and not feeling selfish when they do what they love doing. Yeah, and I think that's been my challenge at times because I know that information, it could be something as simple as if I'm writing something, right? Say I'm going to write a book and my spirit or my aura might say, I want gummy bears. But because of my illogical mind, I might shut that off. I'm like, no, I'm not getting no sugar to, to write. Like, are you crazy? But then I go, what if this makes me happy and excited? Maybe I should get the gummy bears and write the book, right? And so I don't know why that appears or why that happens within a generator like myself. But before we get into that, I do want to acknowledge, because I think this happens in astrology, and I know it has to be some type of life hack or some way. There's people who have their name, they have their date and time and year they were born. They don't have the time they were born. They have the location. What happens when you don't have your time? Because you can't really figure out your design. Is there some type of offset that they could do to get, like, how does that work? Like, what is... What is your answer to that or solution for someone if they came to you? It's like, I don't know my time. For human design, it's specifically unfortunate. Um, location is not so bad. Yeah. Location, is actually, you can, as long as you're in the same time zone, you could be in like different continents. But if you're in the same time zone, it's totally fine. But birth time is actually quite complicated. It gets really nuanced. The thing that I advise people who don't have a birth time, there's actually special astrologers who dedicate themselves in finding your exact birth time. Yeah. So let's get into design. I think I, I gave you my information. Um, Can I talk about the gummy bears for a moment? Yes, please. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Bring that up. Uh, because I love that example. So the thing that I personally love about human design the most is that it gives you a completely way of looking at things that I hadn't had heard before, but it kind of makes sense. And I like them way better. Okay. It kind of like reframes a lot of things and allows you to break free on a different kind of level. And so the gummy bear specifically, right? In human design, there is your digestion type, but there's also like there's 12 kinds of the digestions. Everybody has a specific type to digest not only food, but also information. But um, we also have the way that our energy type uses energy to digest information and to like generate energy from what it's eating, right? So for you as a generator, it's really important to understand that we have two things that we have to think about when we're talking about digestion, food, and these kind of decisions, right? I know that sugar is, you know, theoretically bad for me. It's going to give me a sugar crash, but it also gives me a high that maybe gets me excited to write a couple of hours. Like, what what should I do, right? So in human design, we look at two things. We look at the power of the mind and how incredibly strong our mind's capacity is to influence our experience. And this is really interesting because we're, you know, again, just starting to grasp that. Joe Dispenza does a lot of that work, but we can even look back to references from the 70s where they were like analyzing people with multiple personalities. And they were able to see that one person with one personality has a mole. And when they're changing personality, that mole disappears. Or they even studied somebody who had like three different personalities. And one of those personalities had cancer that they scanned and they saw. But when it switched into new personality, that cancer disappeared, which wow. is like crazy mind blowing. Yeah. So our mind and our capacity to believe something into existence is way more powerful than I think we're able to right now grasp but we have to think our mind believes certain things if we're constantly told gluten is bad sugar is bad whatever whatever all of those things are really bad we're going to believe those things are bad those things are going to be bad we all know that person that can eat sugar pasta all day and is like super healthy super skinny never has weight you know what i mean like there's this school for those like people who have been smoking for 60 years and they're like have better health than you know you know what i mean like yeah, yeah, they're yeah. The people just like you're like how how is this possible you're doing everything that's bad and you're great you know what i mean so i really feel like there's something where these people just like jump out of the matrix of believing certain things this is just my perspective and so we have the mind and what the mind believes but then we have the energy and energy doesn't lie and so what happens is that as generators manifesting generators you have to be excited about food like it doesn't matter if you've read that you know you gotta drink celery juice or quinoa is the only grain that whatever whatever if quinoa tastes like cardboard to you it doesn't matter how good your brain thinks that is it's going to cause indigestion, unwanted weight gain, and just like bloating and a bad feeling in your digestive system. Why? Because your sacral center, which is in charge to generate energy, will reject that because it's not exciting. Like, I don't want to be fucking eating cardboard, you know? Yeah. 
And so we need to get both of those sides on the same page. We need to have our mind think like, oh, what I'm eating is healthy and is good for me. But also I need my sequel to be super excited about what I'm consuming, right? And so sometimes depending on, you know, like what your issues might be with food, like I have a client who is a manifesting generator and for her, it's really bad to eat a lot of mixed food. So we were in Portugal and she was like eating tapas, like, you know, all variety of foods and her stomach was hurting all night. She woke up the next day still feeling bad. And what she did is that she went to buy an ice cream at like 1130 in the morning for breakfast. Why? Because she knew that her sacral center was going to be so excited about eating that ice cream that it brought everything back into flow and all her digestive issues disappear. So sometimes eating something that really excites you, even though it's, you know, like a treat or it's sweet or it has sugar or carbs or gluten or whatever, all the stuff is that we're not allowed to eat anymore, right? If you're really excited about that, the cellular activation that will happen and the and the excitement of the energy within your body can counterbalance the quote unquote like negative attributes that that food could carry. Wow, that makes sense because I had a night probably last weekend or the weekend before you know, I was just like, you know what? I just want to have some quote unquote unhealthy food. I think I had like some dairy free ice cream sandwiches. I had me some vegan quinoa chips, kombucha. I had me some kiwi grapes. <laughs> oh, so, had me a wrap, like a beef jerk. That's, that's unhealthy food for you? I'm just saying because I have a personality or energy type where I can eat a lot and I love food. I can really binge on food. Like it's, it's, I think that's the the Capricorn Mars in me. Uh, it's because it's intense. It's like and I'm like, why do I also have a, you have an active brain? So people with an active brain need a lot of food. Like you're gonna eat more oh. than the average person. So active brain is that in my human design? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah. So that's what it is. I was like, I love food. I eat a whole box of pizza. But what I'm really saying is that I'm glad that you confirmed that that we must follow at least i can't speak for others but at least generators and manifest generators we have to follow that safe grow response because it's like it, things that just come to me what i've been doing is testing it out experiments and that's the three in me right and i was like you know what and i think also what happened was when i ate all that stuff i looked at my body the next day and how i felt when i trained the next day i actually had more energy and i felt better i was like i'm glad i did that because sometimes i will rob myself of pleasure and desire because i feel like Oh, that's bad. What really is actually good for me because my energy archetype needs it to recalibrate even more. So that's good. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, I think, and I think you're touching on a really great point, which is this idea of like, how do I teach my subconscious and my nervous system that it's safe for me to do the things that I want, that it's okay for me to do the things that I enjoy and that I desire. Because most of us grow up in a society where when we express, like, let's take Eric, you know, as a little kid yeah. and you don't have any conditioning and, you know, you're being asked like, oh, Eric, you know, help us clean the house. And you're like, Ugh, no, don't want to do it. Like, really not in the mood to, for that. Right. What are your parents going to tell you? Like, who do you think you are? Don't be selfish. You've got to support the family. And children only see black and white. They love me or they don't love me. And in that moment where we hear these things about ourselves, we're like, oh, this is not safe. I better go help out my parents clean the house. Right. And so when we do that, our parents usually compliment us. Oh, we love you. You did an amazing job. We are so proud of you. Obviously, like it's probably bigger than cleaning the house, but you know, you get the gist. And so what happens is that that's what we call education. And in that moment, what you learn or what we learn is that when I express what my inner guiding system is telling me, I love gets taken away and security gets taken away. And in order to feel safe and accepted, I have to reject my desires. I have to disconnect from what my body is telling me. Okay. And, right? And this happens again and again and again and again. And so then we become young adults or, you know, like we finish school and we don't know what to study. We don't know what to wear. We don't know what to eat. We're so confused because for the last, you know, 15 plus years, 20 years, we have been taught that when we listen and when we express what actually is happening within us, it's unsafe. We just suppress it and say, okay, I'll say yes. I'll come to you a bit. I'll train you at 7 p.m. instead of 3 p.m. You know, yeah. I'll do. And we get stuck. We get stuck in jobs that we hate doing. Like, 
we don't have anything else but our soul's compass. Like, what else is going to guide us to where we have to go? And every time we do something that goes against what we feel, that's soul crippling. Like, that is like one of the most biggest pains that we can have. And I truly believe that our purpose is to be in our gifts, that our purpose is to be just who we've come to be and to be authentic. And the universe is constantly conspiring with us to co-create that reality that our soul desires. And because we are so scared and so conditioned to express the things we actually want and to connect to that guiding voice that is going to drive us onto the path to our purpose, we're absolutely just like in this constant battle of, you know, the self-made jail that we live in where our nervous system and our subconscious prefers to be in a hell that's self-made, like in a situation where we're miserable, burned out, uninspired, depressed, because that feels safer because we know this versus stepping out and actually allowing ourselves to trust ourselves. You said something earlier and I want to kind of like, you know, peel it back just a bit on the word authenticity. When it comes to human design, what is authenticity and how do you see it from your projector <laughs> paradigm of the world? Because it is a new trend, just like healing and healers is a new trend. Authenticity is like something I've used over and over in my podcast. And you know, like you said, what is authenticity? Can you explain, elaborate on that and how we can get more into that space for ourselves? I really love that question because it entails a certain self-awareness. And I think so many people who are interested in knowing about themselves, you know, we get thrown so many new words and we're all supposed to know what that means, right? Healing again, I I just need to make a detour because this is really important to me. I really don't like the narrative around healing because I do not believe that we are broken. And the thing that I've seen with my clients that holds people back the most is that they don't move through life because I need time to heal. To me, that's the most disempowering discourse that exists in this spiritual niche because the only thing that will make you learn the lessons that you need to overcome your own bullshit and to step into your purpose and find your path and have success is living life. And if you use the excuse of healing to pause your life because you don't want to get triggered, because you don't want to overcome your own insecurities, because you want to play small, because you want to stay stuck, like healing is the biggest excuse to remove yourself from life. And life is the only thing that 200% is gonna move you forward. None of us can escape the fucking lessons of life. Sorry, I get so intense about it. Oh, love it. Come on with it. We need it. Authenticity. So, so this is so important to me. Like, I know a lot of people really hold on to this, like, no, I'm in my healing era. Like, you have to be in your living fucking life era. Yeah. If you're in your healing era, you're gonna go backwards. All of your symptoms will get bigger and you're just going to, you know, go in a downward spiral because you're not moving forward. We can do all of the courses, all of the meditations, all of the visualizations. But the thing that is going to teach you exactly where you're lacking is life. Mm -hmm. Everything that triggers you, every heartache, every like, you know, complication with your boss your family, all of that shit is teaching you where you need to grow and where you need to expand into and where you need healing. But you have to do it from an empowered way of moving forward and not from like removing yourself from life and not having contact with anybody and just like avoiding yeah. personal responsibility and integrity. I activated my sacral chakra. I'm excited. <laughs> now we can move into authenticity. So this is the way that I have boiled down authenticity. Okay. So authenticity is unapologetically owning your personal experience and sharing it with the world. Right. Where's the book? people. Sorry. Where's the book? Can we get the book? Where's yeah. Yeah. Right. It's book? coming. It's yeah. coming. Let it, and somebody invite me. Somebody invite me. Yeah, write the book. Write the book. <laughs> I love it. No, but this this I think is really essential. I remember like in 2019 before I actually started with Human Design, I wrote like this cryptic Instagram post like, I'm going to find the roadmap to my authenticity. And I was really struggling to understand what authenticity meant. And in the first year of like starting my human design business and showing up on social media, the one thing that everybody said was like, oh, you're so authentic. And it was just because I'm not like, talking like this and being like super positive, whatever people need to do to believe whatever they're saying, I guess. But uh, 
But that that's the thing. Authenticity will look completely different for everybody. And I think the scary thing is that authenticity requires us to be really self-aware and connect to the parts of ourselves that we are afraid to share. The most authentic thing that somebody can do is share the stuff that they don't want anybody to know. Like the things you're scared of anybody finding out, the thing you're ashamed anybody will find out. And the more you talk about this with your friends, and obviously like if you have a platform, the more magnetic you become. There's something about people, like look at Cardi B. Like Cardi B to me is the person who is like one of the most authentic people in the world. And that's why she is so incredibly like successful. Because she is her, whatever that means to me, you know, like it's very shocking. Like I'm a European girl, you know what I mean? So, but her authenticity creates this magnetism, right? Even though nothing about her is very real, you know, like her aesthetic, everything like, you know, molded and like, you know, surgery and like, it's not that it's natural or anything like that, but it's authentic. It's, this is who I am. You like it or you don't like it, Right. And, and it's beautiful. I want to, you just, you might make me maybe share too much information, but I want to be authentic in this moment. I want to tell a story about this. Uh, so I met someone and we were talking and I don't know, some, some way, somehow, how many partners have you had sexually came up? And I'm like, okay. And so I asked the question to them and they didn't want to tell me. I'm like, yo, why are you asking me that? Like, come on, I want to judge you. Like, she's like, no, I promise you, if I tell you, you're not going to ever talk to me, you're going to look at me different. I'm like, says who i said you're creating this narrative i'm not going to say the number so she gave her number the number was more than 20 just know that right so in her mind she thought that she's she's bad or she's different or she's and i'm like yo i said guess what because i was teaching her in the moment how to be her authentic self i said i said how you feel now i was like still here gave me a number feels better right she's like yeah it does Right, because you're holding on to truth that no one cares but you about protecting it. And because you're authentic, guess what? You're more free. So I said, guess what's going to happen with you or not? You're never going to lie or have to lie to me because I'm not judging you for your truth. I'm just trying to hold space for your truth, right? And I think the world we live in, it, as everything is getting exposed, as we see, the more we can be in integrity, the more we can be authentic, the more we can have a more fulfilling life. When you're hiding things from your partner, from your family, from whoever, when you hide things from yourself, it's not going to be an easy life to live within your body. And so I just love that you brought up Cardi B and anybody else says in because I feel like those people are, they say authenticity is the most powerful emotion there is. More than love. <laughs> right? More than love? How? Yeah. Because you're not allowing nothing to stop you from being your true essence of who you are in every moment. Yeah. Today, I don't want to be positive. I don't want to smile. Great. Don't smile. Don't be positive. Today, I want to curse out my spouse. Curse your spouse. Be fucking in me, right? Live life. And I think it's important. I love that you got so passionate about that because I think most people feel the way you feel. But they're so afraid to hit that button and turn it the engine on or turn the volume on because they're so afraid of what someone's going to think. They're going to be looked at different. And someone's going to judge them and they're never going to be able to make the money they're going to make or have the person is like, listen, at some point, I believe when you're not authentic, your true self will come to light. And I think the more you suppress your shadow self, your real self, you're going to expose it in a way you don't want it to be exposed because you're holding it in like it's a cage, like it's an animal. So that's beautiful. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think it's a very, very beautiful story that you shared. And I think, you know, in the end, all of these stories that we have about ourselves that we feel shameful, they're there because somebody put them there. And so we are born without any conception of anything. And these beliefs that we grow up with that kind of get ingrained, again, we had to adopt these beliefs because we had to reject part of ourselves in order to be loved and accepted. And they're kind of like, this is one of my favorite things. I wrote about it today, actually. And that is really understanding that, you know, when we're in this, you know, self-aware process, when we're moving to spirituality, when we're getting curious about the things that you share and the, you know, we're, we're on this self-awareness journey, what we're going to meet are going to be blocks, patterns, repetitive shit. And we're like, why? Why do I always hit my head against the same wall? Why am I always attracting the same partners? Why do I always fail in this specific business area, right? 
And so all of these patterns, everything that is standing in between who you are now and who you want to be, that pattern loop belief at some point served you and you had to hold on to that to survive, right? So instead of getting angry at ourselves because again, we find limitations because we have more stuff to work on because we have shadow aspects and we have triggers and we have this and we have patterns and whatever. I want to also bring awareness to the fact that we need to have curious, warm empathy to the thing that is holding us back because the thing that is holding us back right now at some moment protected us from, you know, like the horror, the pain, the heartache, the rejection that are the, the environment in which we grew up with, like presented to us. And when we are curious about that part that we feel shameful about, we realize that that's just our inner child's way of trying to protect itself. And when we connect to that, you know, hurt, fearful inner child, we can have love and empathy for that darkness within us, for that shadow side. And so once we're really having loving, curious energy towards those rejected parts, we can integrate them. And that's when that happens, what you were saying, right? I'm able to integrate the shameful parts of myself and therefore I'm able to show myself in a whole complete way. And now when I'm seen as my whole authentic self with all of the shit, the shadow and the shamefulness, that's when I will be able to have true intimacy. That's when the love that I feel is actually love for who I am. Because what happens is that if we're hiding parts of ourselves from our partners, from our relationships, from whatever, whatever, we become adults that are completely in, you know, relationships and dynamics that are absolutely superficial. And we feel that we're just living this super superficial life where nobody really gets to meet us. And so that's also like a very unpleasant experience to have. That's when we have midlife crisis. Like, who am I? What am I doing? Nobody I see, I, you know? It's it's true. It's real. You will go through a crisis if you don't embrace your true self. I don't care how much money you have, what you have, what you owe, what you know. You go, life will break you to remake you. And I'm saying breaking because we're already, we're not broken, but we're, we're, we're here. We're always healing and evolving. We're saying break down the fakeness in you. Break down the stuff that was put on you from your society, put on you from how you were raised. We didn't come into this world with fear. What? Fear is not real. But it's real to some of us because we believe it, right? Like you said in the beginning, we can believe it can manifest. And so I'm just so grateful and fortunate to do the work, to understand the work, but to be curious. Like like I was about human design that, that continuously led me to this point, say, what is my design? What is Gene Keith? What is a 3-6 role model? What is, you know, all these things that we have no answer to until we have someone like you who can speak profoundly about it. Um, can you speak just a little bit on, like, how do we use our design? Because I think this is such people, people are even looking for money or they're looking for love, right? Those two things go head to head, some sorts, and people live in, right? How can people use the design? And then, last but not least, how can people use the design to find their most authentic self? So can you speak on those? Love, money, and then authenticity of self. How does the design help you get close to that? Because I think numerology I love, astrology I love, but it doesn't break it down in the details the way the design does. So this is the, the concept, okay? The concept is that we have come whole with our... I, I don't know if I said this in the last episode, but I'm going to explain it again. Um, we've come into this world with our soul being whole and we know exactly what chances, opportunities, relationships, money are meant for us in this lifetime. And all of these things are kind of like an iCloud and a holding pattern. And our aura has the key. Our aura is the password that connects the things that are meant for us into our reality. What happens though, and this is something we talk a lot about in human design, is the conditioning and the process of deconditioning. And so conditioning, we can imagine it like a slime that's sitting on top of our aura, not allowing that our soul can connect with the things that are meant for us. And so this conditioning is born from what I was explaining earlier, that when we were little and we showed ourselves authentically, but that authenticity was rejected, uh, we were punished or shamed for our whole authentic self in order to survive, we reject a part of that whole authentic self. And that allows us to create a lost self. And so that lost self creates this emptiness inside that we try to fill through success in our work, through intense but toxic relationship, through substances, material things to kind of fill that hole. 
And what human design does, it actually allows us to tap into that parts of ourselves that we have rejected and lost so that we understand that those specific unique qualities, gifts, and talents that we have are meant for us to explore and move onto the path of our purpose. And when we're able to integrate back to our whole authentic self, we're able to take off that slime and conditioning from our aura and our soul can go back to connecting to the things that are meant for us in this lifetime. And so what human design specifically is that it allows us to use energy and alignment with the universe to find the path to our purpose. And it has this deep information around our karma, our unique gifts, the way that we're meant to operate in the world, the way that we're meant to show up, how we're meant to make money, how we're meant to connect romantically with other people, it has astrology, the ancient knowledge of the I Ching, the mystic side of Judaism, which is Kabbalah and the chakra systems, but also quantum physics and genetics. And so all of this information combined really gives us such a deep roadmap of how we're meant to operate energetically. It's so good because it encompasses everything. Yeah, it's crazy. Like you, Like the depth of human design is insane. And this is actually, it's great. But I also always like to pay attention to the fact that your life doesn't change by learning shit. Mm -hmm. So you need to embody stuff, right? So like my biggest goal, what I want my human design legacy to be is to give practical tools to actually live out your design. Because human design is so vast and information that people nerd out on human design information, want to know all of the details, all of the nitty gritty, go deep in it. And they're like, no, I just have to learn more before I can actually implement it. No, just let me learn a little bit more. And then, oh, I need this information. I need this other information. But where you're going to see the biggest change and impact in your life through human design is when you start living out your energy type. And the energy type is the most basic, most powerful tool to find alignment. It gives you a tangible strategy on how to move through life. It gives you a core feeling that allows you to know when you've gotten off track from the path to your purpose and it pinpoints what your main goal is in life, which is your signature. And when you focus on your signature as collateral, your life will have an incredible up-leveling. But you don't need to know all of the things. You've got to get the first base solid and start using and living that out. How, so based on my design type, which is someone similar, 3-6 role model generator, What's the best thing I can do in this moment to embody that archetype? Like from you to me, what is the first thing that I need to like forget? Like you said, you said something so powerful. You don't evolve in life from learning anything. You get it from embody, embodiment, right? Because we can have knowledge, but don't have the experience. So then the experience lacking, you can't embody what you know because you haven't experienced it. So how does someone that have my chart of me, myself, how do I fully embody it? Like what's the easiest way? I really think the easiest, easiest way for you, which I think you're already doing because you've been into human design for a while, is just 2000% honing into giving yourself permission to follow your sacral desires no matter what. And that's scary. That's scary because it means creating boundaries. It means saying no. It means, you know, letting down people. Like there's these very deep fears that are going to come up around you know, what happens when you start owning your truth and what you want to do. And if there's this core belief of like, oh, I'm being selfish, I'm here to support other people, like generators very often struggle with people pleasing tendencies, like those are very deep survival attachment core wounds that are going to come up. And so it sounds very easy to be like, oh, I just, you know, I'm just going to live my life doing exactly what I want. But it's just not that easy because there's so much conditioning and there's so much, you know, fear around that. And so it seems so simple, but actually really working on this is going to unlock deep rooted limitations. And the beauty of human design in general is that there is an impact that only happens through what in human design we call the oral transmission. So in human design, we talk about the cellular activation and the cellular activation comes from the specific code words we use in human design. And these words carry a certain frequency. And that frequency, when we have an oral transmission, will awaken your dormant DNA. So it is a completely different, you know, we call it mutation. It's a different process 
if you read human design information or if you hear human design information. And yeah, because I think I I did struggle with the people pleasing and letting people down. Now I'm over that. I got over. I don't care. Okay, I'm no, I can't show up today. No, I don't want to train you. No, I don't have no money for you. I don't. I'm not attached to that part of me anymore because that was hard for years. And a lot of us dealing with people I love and care about saying, I don't know, because I know I got to honor what I want, what I need for me, because I've always, I always sacrificed me for you. And then you get me nowhere. I'm not doing that. I think my struggle now is maybe it's a past life regression or something where when I do something for my desire, part of me feels like I'm being irresponsible. That makes sense? Mm Mm-hmm. Like, no, you can't go on no trip or no, you can't. It'll just come up. It won't be like, you can't do this. It'll be like, you know what I mean? Like it, it'll come up in spurts. It won't, it's not like it's stopping me, but it'll come up. I'm like, but what if that's what I really want? <laughs> right? Based on yeah. my design. So- right. But it, it's, it's your mind, right? And in human design, our mind is actually what we call the not self. Our mind is constantly interfering with our truth from the human design perspective. And so you're constantly fighting with your reason and the beauty of the sequel center, the beauty of the power of trusting yourself and being in the moment and allowing to respond to, you know, the impulses you're receiving on a daily basis from who you meet, what you eat, who you see, what you smell, like you're in constant respond modus. And so your mind is going to try to reason with you. Like, no, you can have ice cream. We have learned that ice cream is really, really bad. And like, that's not good because whatever, whatever. Or like, you know, you, whatever, you know, the mind is just like constant chatter. So you're like, not only you, but all of us are constantly negotiating, you know, trusting the wisdom of our body and then fighting with the logic of our mind. And again, the mind is fantastic. The mind is great for so many occasions, but it's not always what we should rely on to find and be on the path of our purpose. My body is saying, I just want to stay in bed for another hour. And maybe when you stay in the bed for another hour, maybe there's a manifestation that happens that you can't see. So you need to trust what your body is saying instead of like, no, I say I get up at 5 a.m. every day. You know, it's like, yeah, really. But today, the body says, Eric, can you just give me 20 minutes? Right? Yeah. And you know what? For you, actually, like you're somebody who thrives on consistency. You're somebody for whom discipline is easy and you have a defined ego. So those are like very strong indications that you're going to do pretty well with being able to commit to yourself, committing to other people and doing the shit you said you were going to do. You know, like there's a very strong capacity for you to be in this very structured way of showing up in life. But there's people who are not meant to have consistency. There's people who are indisciplined undisciplined and it's not a negative word it just means they don't need discipline to have success in their life and so especially in you know like the sports gym health spiritual thing where it's like you have to wake up every morning at 5 a.m and drink your you know water with lemon and then you meditate and then you like there's a lot of people for whom that is actually energy draining and they try to do it because everybody in the industry is telling them the only way you're going to become a millionaire, the only way you're going to have the body of your dreams is by being consistent and having discipline. But these people actually will feel worse if they try to apply consistency and discipline. And I had this client, 25 year old guy, super fit, biohacking, like all of the things. And he's like, Micah, I'm a bad spiritual person. And I'm like, okay, what does that mean? Why do you think you're a bad spiritual person? And he's like, well, because I do all of the things and I wake up in the morning and I do the routine and every day the same hour, same time, and I and I try to apply discipline, but then I fall off the wagon and I, you know, I feel like shit. And then we looked at his design and we just found out that that's not the way that serves him. He needs to move through life in a different way, in a more intuitive way, in a way where he can still show up every day, but maybe it's, you know, one day, I, one day I wake up at seven and the next I wake up at 12 and sometimes I'm going to have lunch at one and the other next time I'm going to have lunch at four. He has to move in a different way for him to be aligned and trying to force himself into discipline and consistency is actually draining his energy versus people like you and I who have arrows that are pointing to the left, which thrive on consistency and discipline. For us, having a routine is really you know, energy enhancing, like no matter where we go, we can be traveling, but we'll have our little routine, you know, we'll wake up, go to the gym, have whatever breakfast, you know, there's something that 
familiarity and that consistency of knowing what we're going to do that allows our overthinking brains, our active brains, to use up the energy to think about important things and not about what I'm going to eat or what I'm going to do today. And there's something I did with my Instagram because last year was big ego death in a great way because I was so attached to what I put out, right? I'm so perfectionist. You got to look clean. You got to have a haircut. You got to, you know, it was just so just the car has to be clean every time we post it. It has to be the best looking car. And I'm like, man, fuck that. It's not even real. Hey, I, I don't look like that every day, all day. I don't mind showing up. And so now I've been where like, I'm not attached to what comes out if it's really my authentic self. So I'll go for a run and I'll get an intuitive hit on a, just a download. I'll put it out. It's not even about the engagement of numbers, it's about how I'm feeling. It makes me feel good, right? Because I'm expressing myself in an authentic way that I feel like I want to share it. And I'm not putting no shackles on it or no restrictions or no, you can't post that in. And I still fight with her. What time? And it's like, I, yeah, I feel you. I feel you. You know what I think is really interesting about this is that I feel like 2024 is really the year where we're all just like stepping into integrity. Like I see so many, so many people being like, "F this shit. I'm not gonna do what the algorithm tells me. I'm not gonna do what people tell me I should do." Like so many people are completely throwing all of the rules out the window and are like completely tuning into what feels right for them. Like the amount of creators that I'm following that are like, I'm not doing short content. I'm just doing three hour podcasts or like I'm completely switching my niche and like, you know, in the niche switching again, because like this is not working for me. Like I thought this was it. I'm not like it's crazy. Everybody's totally doubling down on what feels right for them. And I think that that's super inspiring and interesting to watch. Yeah. And it's, it's you. It's it comes out. It comes through better. You get more of a hit. The person hearing it, reading it, witnessing it, they even feel inspired. And with AI, you know, and, and this whole capacity of delegating and being able to create, you know, content, create workshops, create everything in this very digitalized unhumanness. Yes. One of the things that I'm really into is effort. The beauty of putting effort into the things that we're doing. Like it takes, you know, it takes a certain courage and bravery to make that effort every day to showing up, to sharing, to wanting to be seen, to being vulnerable. Like effort is such a beautiful, beautiful thing. And often, you know, in the spiritual world, it's like every time something's hard or everything requires energy or effort, it's like, oh, no, you're like hustling. Like we also got to just like, you know, put effort into shit in the Kabbalistic um, wisdom. There is this concept of having to earn the light of the creator. So there is something of us needing to, and this is not, you know, because when we come from people pleasing tendencies, there's this thing of like, oh, I need to do something in order to have value. And this is not what I'm saying, but there's something about having to put a certain effort, having to contribute, having to, you know, honor the gifts that we have and, and be responsible to share what we've come to share in this lifetime with the world like that is an important task we only got one fucking life like really honor your capacity and your individuality and and you know like i was trying to to share this with somebody the other day and the person was like yeah but you know this is relying on education and i'm like no like you can be the fucking best hugger in the world and you have so much value to provide there's actually a reflector her name's ama she travels around the world only to hug people. That's crazy. Give me a hug. Right? Yeah. Just goes, she hugs thousands of people. It changes their life with a hug. And so we don't need to have the best education or know how to communicate the most eloquent way. When we just understand what it is that we are really great at, that's when we're in our purpose. That's when we are authentic. And our purpose is not a fucking job description. I'm swearing so much. I'm so sorry. No, but our, that. Our, our purpose is not a job description. It's not the bio on our Instagram. Like your purpose is just showing up and sharing what you love yeah. with others. That's it. That's it. And then the purpose will develop and it will blossom and it will bloom and it will allow you to see where you're going. But this idea of like, I have a business idea and this is how I'm going to become a millionaire. And these are my strategies. I don't see that happening. Like life takes you on the ride. It's meant to bring you. And they say, you know, Kabbalistic, I got this book, the Kabbalist, Kabbalism, uh, astrology. They say sharing is receiving, right? Yeah. 
And if you're if you're losing something on a physical plane, you gain something in a spiritual way. And it's a uh, the light of the creator be the light to get more of the light from the creator, right? And I'm learning, someone told me this years ago, he's like, don't try to get everybody into the light, just be the light. And the people who want to be lit, they will follow. And that's what I feel like I'm here to do. That's what I feel like we're all here to do. It's like, whatever your light is, ignite it, and light it up, and light it everywhere you go. Because I know I'm a change and shift the frequency in, that, in my positive whatever way, authentic way. And I think that's what life is about. In order to be me, I must be free. In order to be free, I must be me. And I think most people are not free because we're holding on to restrictions in our mind again. Yeah, like I did with the food. Like, oh, I can't have a gummy bears. Right. Oh, I can't have the pizza. What's my body saying? So, Micah, this was amazing. This is phenomenal. But before we get off here, how like how can how can one get into your ore field, get into your vortex? How can we give service to what you do and get to know more about you? Because we want to learn and connect with the paradigm and IP of you. I got all the juice. I got all the juice. So if you want to have cellular activation, I have a podcast that is called the Soft Power Podcast. I now have also a YouTube channel where you got tons of free, valuable information called the Human Design Portal. You can find me on Instagram at Micah Gabriela. You can find me on the wild web. I don't know, MicahGabriela.com. And yeah, just reach out. Send me a DM to tell me you listen to this and ask me anything you want. Um, I'll try my best to answer. Love that. And by the way, what's your life path number for the numerologist and astrology? What's your moral round? I'm on, I'm on life path seven. Literally the 10th year. Like I'm, I feel it so deeply though. Like I could not. Knowledge and truth. Yeah. I'm telling you. And it's interesting because seven is also my birth date and I have like a specific seven is my lucky number. There's something about the seven that is really like powerful in my life just as a, you know, sign. Well, again, thank you. We appreciate you. Eric, thank you so much. It was so lovely to sit down with you again. Yes. Everybody follow her. Everything in the show notes. This was an incredible episode. <laughs> I got to do a part three. Maybe I got to come to yeah. Or maybe, maybe to the state. I'll show you around. You know, yeah. Have to- well, this was so great. Uh, Figure Talks, Figure Talks podcast. People share, subscribe, like. Uh, this episode will be out on all platforms. And uh, Micah Gabriella, follow her. She's the best. That's all. That's it. We're out. Thank you, Eric. Thank you.